Hello everyone, this is Rodri. Today this is a short tutorial talking about the distributing points and uh, also removing points in volume in geometry nodes. I don't know when exactly you're watching this tutorial, but up to this moment 3.0 still doesn't have distribute points in volume nodes. And uh, more importantly, 2.93 hasn't uh, been officially released yet up to the moment that I'm recording this video. This means even if there is a distributed points in volume node being landed in master, you need to wait at least four months until you get an official release, official stable release that allows you to distribute points in volume in geometry nodes. No need to say that many people may just hang on 2.93 long term release for whatever reason. Another thing is that this tutorial is not only going to talk about distributing points but also removing points in volume. So perhaps I want you to check the later concept as well using the timestamp or so, because I think it is very important. So let's start. So here we in Blender 2.93, and this is a very simple setup that uh, if I hit M to mute this point distribute, I have a cube, and if I enable the point distribute, this is just a distribute the points on the surface of the point, and you do not have other um, mode that enables you to actually distribute in terms of volume. If you go into a volume, it's just basically hollow, empty, no points in there except the surface, which is very, very boring. So the, the whole principle or the, of workaround is pretty simple. Basically, if you only distribute things uh, on the surface, then can we actually uh, create multiple surfaces in the inner part of this cube so that to kind of fake a kind of effect that you distribute points in volume. And uh, basically, in that case, you just use array modifier. So if you use the array modifier, by default, you see it has a relative offset, so you distribute multiple points. But in such a kind of case, what if I have an object offset, which I, I'm going to use an empty, and I'm going to scale that this op empty down, and plug our select our object with these empties. So you can actually see if it goes to the X review, you can see how this multiple surface has been created. And if you increase the count, then you have multiple surfaces until it really fills the volume. So you can do really high amounts or whatever amount that you like. Basically, this is kind of point just to know that. The empty is a step function, so you don't want to really scale that down too much. Maybe 0 0.8 is kind of enough with 0. The parameter things you have to deal with by yourself. And once you have done that, you distribute everything to volume. And this is not a perfect solution because you do have uh, these or these or that issues within everything. But uh, it works. And if you do not really like, because you can see all these kind of edges because it's really not on the surface. So you can see it's, it's not a really, you can obviously see all this kind of flaw. So in this case, what you can potentially do is that you just the attributes, uh, randomize and add the positions and take the vector. Then you add the vectors, uh, take a negative one. So you randomize these kind of things um, or you can take the value a little bit slow, a uh, little kind of. You, you can try by yourself. It's uh, it's uh, just uh, an option. There are many ways to do further, but I don't think that you need an instruction for this kind of detailed stuff. Okay, just to know that people complain that a modifier often takes a lot of RAM off your computer, so you may want to think about these kind of issues. Um, like how large is the object, how small scale is your empty, and so on. Another thing I want you to realize is the array modifier is based on the object offset, but uh, it does not only depend on the scale, but it also depends on the rotation location. You probably know how it will occur if you rotate these empties. Everything, every things within this transform will be counted, which also means if I move these cubes away, everything will just be destroyed. It. it just everything becomes very weird. It does not really work. So in this case, what you have to do is to parent the empty with our cubes so that you move the cubes empty go with you so that the offsets from the array modifier will be maintained so that you can do whatever you want nicely without any problem. Okay. So 
So up here, we are just talking about how to mimic or fake kind of volume within a single mesh to create to create a kind of illusion that you are distributing points in volume. But this technique can be used in many other cases, not only about the distributing points, but also removing points. So here we are in another example that uh, I have a plane and I distribute on top of that. And I also have a cube. Basically what I want is that I want the point to disappear in the area that are covered by these cubes. Okay. This is a plane, but it should work in 3D space or other things. And the one common method that I've seen people doing is to actually use boolean. And they put the booleans, everything has been disappeared. And I, I don't know why everything has been disappeared. I Perhaps this is a bug at this moment, but if you select the object geometry into geometry, it just does not work. I suppose it should work, I don't know. I don't know what actually happens with this boolean node. Um, intersect? Nothing works. I actually am getting confused. So, but regardless, I have heard a kind of two results. One is it's not working as it is shown. Second, it works, but it's slow. Okay. So you need to bear in mind about all these kind of issues that even if it works, it's slow, it's not desirable. Maybe you want to think about if there's alternative way to improve your workflow in terms of this kind of issue. So this is why I want to like to discuss this because there is actually an alternative method which may not be the optimal method, but it really works and it works very well. So basically when you're talking about the removing points, instead of boolean, I personally wish you to have a idea that you can use the point separate node. This is a very interesting node and you put that in, it, nothing happens. Uh, what this point separated node is doing is basically creating kind of mask. And this mask is defined by zero and not zero. This is a very interesting case. And basically you can use the, how should I say? You can use the uh, vertex group to usually define the group, but to define the mask because you have the weight. But uh, there's a, just a, to simplify the workflow, we can use the attribute randomize to show the example. So if I create a mask and put this mask in, then you can see all this kind of point has been dis <laughs> disappeared. Uh, why? Okay, why is that? Why did it disappear? Uh, the reason is because if you think about this minimum and the maximum, uh, as we previously said, that the mask works based on the zero and the not zero, which means 99% of the time, actually probably more than 99% of the time, you will get a mask that's not zero. So in such kind of the case, not zero always goes in the second socket, but uh, zero goes to the upper socket. And because you should probably only have 1% left within everything, it's actually you find none. Because it's just so minimal possibility that you will get a zero from this random value. So a very uh, easy way to actually fix this is just uh, to uh, take this mask and a greater than the float, and take it 0 0.5 and then re-enter the mask. Then you remove half of the points, you create kind of thresholds, and then you can create this kind of thresholds, uh, which kind of portion is included or not included within this mask, and you can always switch back and in about this geometry one and geometry two, which is zero, non-zero, so you have to be already mind into this. But how is that related to our discussion? So now we have known the basics of using these point separate nodes, and then we will move forward to know about how to evaluate the mesh. So there is a node which is called attribute proximity. And in this case, you need a target uh, geometry. So we'll take the object info and finally select our cubes. Uh, just to select our cubes, put the geometry socket into the place. And then it will generate either distance or position. Here, we do not really worry about the position. It's basically the shrink wrap modifier that you, you count. Another thing is that it's basically the distance. So we're going to take a D and then use the D as a mask. And immediately you will find, if I check, check the X-ray mode, disable this error modifier, you can see actually nothing happens. Okay. 
basically the reason is the same because if you evaluate the distance from all these kind of faces then it's uh, starting from the zero and immediately it gets not zero so everything just uh, show up in the second socket without anything in the first socket in this case one way is you can still usually compare but there is another method which basically use attribute color ramp you type a d and d and you put this this color ramp to the place so basically this color ramp is going from 0 to 1 and this is roughly 0 0.5 so you put a black to 0 0.5 so basically everything less than 0 0.5 will be counted as 0 so you have a half half portions uh, between each separation this kind of idea but just to know everything essentially is based on distance and obviously if you increase the scale of our initial plane then you have, you should have it's not a 50 50 split because the distance over to that place is probably 100 meters away i don't know okay so this is kind of idea but whatever you would in whatever case you always need to realize the fact that there is a middle portion that has not been removed because we're essentially removing uh, we're basically evaluating the mesh based on its faces and there is points edges modes but there is no volume mode for this attribute proximity after this moment i do not know if there will be uh, a volume mode uh, added in the future or not I, I don't think it will be in the attribute proximity honestly but this is one issue that you will encounter at this moment however we have just discussed that how can you if you evaluate the face you have a method to fake the volume and it has basically been spoiled earlier with this array modifier and empty so I only have two so you increase the count of the array modifier and you can see it basically works there is one issue however is if i increase the scale of this object you can see there is the outer surface of points has not been removed i don't know i'm not really sure about why it is but basically the idea is if we check that to relative it'll fix everything so what actually happens is the original is the word uh, the relative is the how should I say, including the child and whatever other transform. I'm not sure why a remodifier will be counted as relative, not the origin, but it's just a box that's, or not box, probably just a whatever, just change that and it works. And then you can remove all, the, you can evaluate those sound points. So turn on the X ray mode. It's basically a volume. So if uh, I would like to disable, the, if I do not want to see our cubes, you can just use these bounce or you use whatever method to actually try to deal with this uh, and uh, you don't necess necessarily to use the cubes this is how once you set this up this is the procedure that you can use whatever match a human character or whatever other stuff just uh, including uh, a cylinder that i'm going to take the eight vertices or actually six vertices so we have a nice cylinder shapes being generated it's kind of confusing, but you can actually see it's how this cylinder has been drawn on this place. If you increase that to the density to 200, you can see it's more clearly about the shape of this entire whole thing. Okay, so this is all about removing points. So here is nothing special. Uh, basically, we combined um, the technique that we talked about in this entire tutorial that I have a cubes and I distribute points in volumes. And I have a six size cylinders and I did remove points in volumes. Everything is just a uh, very simple and straightforward. And it's, I understand uh, this is not a really complex setup in geometry nodes, but if you consider about empties, parentings, a modifier, it's, it's not very straightforward. I don't know if everything will be easier or better in the future or not. But uh, maybe maybe it will have improvement. Maybe it will not. Maybe it will, but it takes very long times. But at least this is it works, and this is what uh, we can get at this moment. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.